In my first application, I used the class Support Map Fragment to display a map. This is one of three classes that you can use. Support Map Fragment supports the Fragments API and supports older versions of Android, whereas Map Fragment only works starting on 3.0 or Honeycomb. But there's an even simpler class that you can use called Map View. It's not a part of the Fragments API, and if you want to build a very simple application that doesn't use Fragments, it could be a good way to go. I'll show you how to use the Map View class in a project called Map View. I'll create another new layout file, and I'll name this one activity underscore map view. As with all new layouts, it starts with a linear layout element. Now, within the linear layout, I'll add an instance of the map view. I'll use the entire name of the class, including its package, com.google.android.gms.maps. Dot map view. This is the name of a Java class, and it is case sensitive. Next, I'll set its ID. Just as I did previously with the map fragment, I'll give this an ID of map. And I'll set the layout width and height to match the parent so that the map expands to fill the entire layout. I'll close the tag, and that's my map view wrapped within a linear layout. The great thing about a map view is that you can nest it in anything, whereas with fragments, there are certain limitations. You can't nest a fragment within a fragment. So I'll save that change, and I'll go to my main activity class. And this is where I'm loading my layout. Right here, I have a call to set content view, and I'm currently loading the map that's instantiated with the fragment and I'll change that to use the new map view layout. Now, if I run the application at this point, it isn't quite going to work yet. I'll run it on my device, and the application loads up, but when it appears, the map is blank. That's because there are certain extra requirements you have to meet when you want to use the map view class. It adds a little bit of coding at the top of the application, but once that's done, the map will work exactly the same way as a map that's instantiated with the fragment. Here's the extra code you need to add. First, you need to get a reference to that map view object. I'll place the cursor at the top of my class under the instance of the Google map object, and I'll declare a new field data typed as map view, and I'll call it mmapView. Next, I'll go back to my onCreate method and I'll get the reference to the map view class here after I call set content view. I'll say that mmapView gets its reference from find view by ID, and I'll pass in r.id.map. As always with find view by ID, I need to cast the returned value. I'll press control one and choose add cast to map view. So now I have a reference to the map view object. Here's the additional requirement. The map view object has a set of lifecycle methods that match the lifecycle methods of the activity. These include on create, on resume, on pause, on destroy, on save instance state, and on low memory. You need to override each of these lifecycle methods in your activity and call the matching method in the map view object. I'll start in the on create method. I'll add another line of code after I've gotten the reference to the map view, and I'll call mmapView.onCreate. When you're calling a lifecycle method that receives an argument, such as the onCreate method that receives the bundle, you need to pass the argument forward. So I've called the mapViews onCreate method and passed saved instance state. Now I'll override the rest of the lifecycle methods. I'll go down to the bottom of the class, and I could add each of the override methods manually, but it'll be easier to use Eclipse. So I'll go to the menu and choose Source, Override Implement Methods, and I'll select the five methods that I need. I already have on create, so next I'm going to look for on pause, on low memory, on destroy, on save instance state, 
and on resume. I'll click OK, and here are the methods that I need to override. And I'll do them in order. For each of the methods, I'll get rid of the auto-generated comment and then add code after the call to the superclasses method. I'll call mmapview.onDestroy. Then I'll do the same thing with on low memory. And on pause. And on resume. And on save instance state. On save instance state is like on create in that it receives an argument that needs to be passed forward. I'll save my changes and once again run the application. Now when the application reloads, the map is displayed. So the great difference between map view and map fragment or support map fragment is that map view does not work with the fragments API and it can be nested within any other view, whereas there are restrictions with the fragment classes. For most of this course, I'll be using the support map fragment class rather than map view. But if you need map view, this is how you make it work.